The reading that we just heard from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians is an extremely important reading because there are many times, well, several times anyway, when St. Paul speaks about this mystery, but he never tells us what the mystery is. The only place in all the letters of St. Paul where he actually tells us what the mystery is that he is referring to is right here in Ephesians. Obviously, he preached this mystery to the people, so he didn't have to explain it to them. But he didn't preach it to us. And so we need to be able to know what that mystery is. And he says that the mystery which was hidden from everyone in the past is now revealed through the, the apostles and the prophets. And he said it is that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The fact that prior to our blessed Lord, salvation was from the Jewish people. It was to them that the revelation of God was given. Now in Christ, we have the fullness of God's revelation. And we have an expansion then of God's salvific will. It is not just that one must become Jewish in order to be saved, but rather that the Gentiles, which means the, the nations that aren't Jewish, would now be part of, the, of salvation through Christ. This is huge. And at the same time, then we look at our own situation and listen to what our Lord told us in the gospel that from those to whom much has been, ex been given, much is going to be expected. Well, that's us. We have been given an immense amount. We have been given the fullness of truth. We have been given the fullness of the means of salvation. We've been given the sacraments. We have been given the church. We have been given 2,000 years of saints. We have everything. And consequently, we are going to be held more responsible than anyone else. That's a heavy burden, but it really isn't because it's just what we were created for. Because basically what it means is that we are to know the truth and we are to love. That's not a heavy burden. If we look at it in the sense of laws, I have to do this and I have to do that, yeah, then it's a burden. But if we're loving, there's no burden in that. If we love, we're going to do everything that we're being asked to do. We're going to follow all the laws, not simply because we need to follow the law, but because if we're loving, we're going to do what's right. We're going to follow the truth because we love the truth, because the truth is a person, and the person is Jesus Christ. And so if we're going to serve the Lord, it's not just about going through the motions. It's not just about following laws and rules. It's about doing the right thing for the right reason, because we love the Lord. So if we see it that way, there is no burden at all. It is total freedom. It is the very purpose for which we are created. And what a gift, what a blessing that God has given to us all of this. The fullness of the truth has all been given to us. Now the question is, what are we doing with it? Are we availing ourselves of it? Do we look at it and say, well, it's all there, but I don't care? I'm not really that interested to learn, to find out? Yeah, then it becomes a burden. Because then we're not truly loving the Lord. We're not going deeper and deeper into the mystery of Jesus Christ. And if we're not going deeper into the mystery of the Lord, then the question is, what are we going deeper into? It's either the world or ourselves. And that would be the opposite of charity. And it would also be the opposite of truth. 
and that's what becomes burdensome for us when we live in a way that we weren't created to live. So in Christ, not only has the fullness of truth been revealed to us, but the means for our fulfillment as human persons has been revealed to us. That's what all of us now have that opportunity to do. But it's not just an opportunity. It's something we're going to be held responsible for. The Lord makes that very clear in the gospel. So on the day of judgment, we're gonna to have to answer to what we did with that truth, what we did with that charity, what we did with the call that is ours. And to be able to see the, the love and the mercy, because if it weren't for our Lord, most of us would have no means of salvation because most of us weren't Jewish or our families weren't Jewish. And most of us would be cut out. So when we see that mercy which has been extended to us, we need to be willing to extend that to others. When we experience the love of God that has been poured into our hearts, we have to extend that to others when we recognize and accept the fullness of truth that has been given to us, then we want to extend that to others. But again, that becomes the question, is it what we really want? I say that only because people of today want to pick and choose. I like this truth, but not that one. I don't, want, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't accept that. I know this is what the church says, but I don't believe it then we know better than Jesus. Not a good idea. We've rejected his truth for something that we decided is better. Kind of amazing that we would think that we have something better than God, but that's what we keep doing. That's where the rub comes. We've been given all of this, but we don't really want it. That's our choice, to accept the truth, to conform ourselves to the truth in love, and to live that truth so that it's brought into the world. It's there for everyone. Most people don't even know it's there, but we do. And so now the question is, what are we doing with it? <laughs>